How you doing, girls? Colonel, good morning. Good morning. Rainwater everywhere. Chicken check. Checking on the chickens. Cleaning up on the Rackley roost. Ugh. Mud. Rain. Destroyed this place. Sloppy, sloppy Joe's in here. Here you go. Here you go. Why don't you scratch around over there and clean that up for me? We have got ourselves one very worn out archery target. Hopefully by the time this video is done, we're gonna take this right here and we're gonna send it through a little piglet. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I don't know about you, hopefully you have got yourself a, an animal already this season, harvested it. Maybe you're eating some burgers on the weekends from your, from your harvest. Love to hear that. So I'm still tweaking out over deer and I'm really excited. I've got some, uh, some recent deer opportunities set up and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just tweaking out. I, I got a new compound bow that I'm working on, still setting it up, haven't sighted it in yet. But this right here, this is, uh, this is a bow that I got early spring. I've been practicing with um, all summer into the fall. So I recently got a quiver for this bow and I got some new arrows. I got the Easton Legacy, the Carbon Legacies. Um, obviously they're, they're painted like wood or they have wraps on them for like, for, to look like wood, but they're micro diameter to five millimeter and they are shooting darts with these 150 grain uh, broadheads. I'll show you guys here in a second. See this little pig down here? This little 50 pounder. We're gonna take a couple shots at this guy. Mm. So this is about max distance right here where I've got a stand set up. I'm gonna show you guys here later today. Hopefully these pigs are gonna come in. But this is about max distance. With this recurve, I feel better shooting out to like 20 than I do with a primitive bow. If we can do this, if we can do this right here, guys, we're gonna be all right. Now these are, these are actually some, some gut shots, but I think we can do a little tracking and, and find that pig. Pig, vitals more far forward. You wanna hit more right, right by that front shoulder but elevation's good. So here's why I'm hunting today, and this is why I'm excited. Every once in a while, I'll see some pigs. They've mostly been coming in at night, but for the last couple days, they've been coming in right at dark, right in the evening. And they're, they're utilizing this wallow. There's one good sized boar that's coming to it. And then every once in a while, the whole group will come in. So I'm hoping that tonight, this boar's gonna come in. Maybe he'll bring the herd. Okay, y'all, it is gear prep time. We're getting ready to head out into the woods. Spent the afternoon tuning my compound. Got it dialed. We got to hunt with that next week. I'm so pumped about. So now we're just getting gear ready for the hunt tonight. So we're going to be saddle hunting. And I don't want to hike with the saddle on, so I'm going to throw it in my pack. And this is the broadhead that we're going to be using right here. This is a 150 grain iron wheel single bevel. It's a left bevel edge to match the left rotating feathers that I have on here, the fletchings. Should be good to go. After pulling back my compound, 70 pound compound all day, this 55 pound actually doesn't feel that bad. It feels like a 40 pound. So a little training, a little training, feeling good, feeling strong. Let's hike out in the woods and get up in our tree. The amount of deer traffic on this trail is absurd. That's all from last night. All right, guys, unfortunately, we're just gonna have to completely stuff the boots. It's like literally flooded right now. It's a flowing creek. 
That ain't no good for walking three miles. Son of a dick, I almost stepped on that guy right there, that damn water moccasin. I was literally stepping over him and I just saw his mouth open and I jumped back. Holy, holy shiitake mushrooms. That about scared the tar piss out of me, guys. Look at that thing, dude. <sighs> well, thanks for the warning, I guess. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to mess with you, boy. You better not be here when I get back walking in the dark, dude. Onward. Unfortunately, that is not the only creek we have to cross. Just saw some bobcat prints right there. That's one cool thing about fresh rain. You get to see all the, the fresh prints. I know these, uh, these toenails of mine are going to be barking when I get back from this hunt. If a water moccasin doesn't sting me on the way back in the dark. <laughs> it's too late now. We're, we're too far into it. We're not turning around. All right, but we're, just, we're just getting wet at this point. There's, there's, no, there's no two ways about it. Basically freaking alligator hunting. Did not expect that much rain. Totally underestimated the amount of rain that we've had. Oh yeah, no, no, it's, oh gosh. It's, it's actually flowing now. I can't believe this. Well, this is where the water moccasins ought to be right here. Oh my gosh, no. Oh my gosh, my bow just dropped off a branch up there. Wow, what a hunt. What a hunt we have going right now. Okay. How we doing? How we doing, Bo? Holding up all right?
there's a squirrel over here, and he just keeps barking. I don't know what he's barking at. Uh, typically in my quiver, I'll carry two broadheads, and then I'll like, carry a, uh, like a judo point or a, like a small game point for this reason. Tonight I got three broadheads. I just squirrels everywhere. I'm surrounded by them. walked on that guy. I picked the wrong night to go, boys. Ugh. I'm just going to let you crawl. Get on with your business. Keep slithering. That was an interesting walk in the woods, my friends. That was sketchy. Just getting out of the tree stand in the dark, being wet, walking through uh, little creeks and puddles. Um, you know, at one point, I was I was just trying to stay dry, stay on the uh, dry side of the the bank, and I slipped on the angle, just, just fell in. You know, just waist waist deep, wet. And normally I put my, I walk in the woods with my red light on, you know, which I suggest. Stealthy animals don't seem to mind it. Uh, and tonight I walked with my 
broad beam white light on until I got to my doorstep. There was just so many snaky looking things. I was just seeing oak leaves that just looked like copperheads and I'm stopping and I went, Ew! it wasn't. And then finally ended up running into one. I just knew I was or another water moccasin, something. So all we saw tonight was snakes, um, squirrels and crows. We're going to take a pause from the pig hunting and we are going to wait for it to dry out a little bit. Hopefully get a daytime trail cam pick and then reconvene. But tonight it was just demon sausages. I've been flinging trad arrows and we've just had rain, rain, rain the last couple days. Pigs are coming out just after the dark, you know, just after that sun goes down. And we finally have a cold front. I hope they come in earlier tonight. Like hope they come in and you know, at, at six o'clock or something, but it's going to get darker a little earlier tonight because of the overcast. And I'm going to go to my compound. We're going to Rambo. I've got lighted, uh, lighted pins on here. So I'll be able to see, uh, you know, way better than I will with the, with the trad bow, trad bow right after that sun goes down. I'm going to go ahead and head out there a little early. I did just, First big cold front, it's like 38 degrees outside. Stuff's gonna be moving. And since I still haven't gotten anything out of a saddle to this day, I wouldn't mind getting it, getting it with a compound either. I spooked a group of about four deer about 100 yards away from the stand. But as soon as I got up here, I saw a deer walking around. So things are definitely moving early. Pecans have fallen everywhere. Good food source on the ground. I think we're gonna see something tonight. All right, we got a couple of deer coming in right now. Just a couple little white tails. Little guys. sat here probably like five times and I've never seen deer in the evenings so this is a good sign they usually come in in the mornings saddle tree white tail encounter this season <laughs> he got right under the tree and realized something was off i just taken a leak under that uh, a 
up here on the tree like 30 minutes ago. They couldn't hold it anymore, so he knew something was here. But I just looked up. I couldn't hear leaves crunching because everything's so wet. I looked up and he was just sitting there licking himself. And I, I saw Mama back there too. I still see her right now. I saw Mama back there. I think that's her, her two little boys. One of those I've definitely seen on camera. He's, he's got nubs. Clearly, he's got nubs. I'm gonna say 30 minutes until it's like prime big time. I don't wanna to speak too soon, but I'm pretty sure I just heard a big grunt. It's right off to my left. still see. I got my lighted pen on so I can see my pen, but if I'm being honest, I'm probably going to be walking back with, with pigs. I was just hoping to get one like right now, the last second, but <sighs> these things are tricking me. Mmm, beautiful morning in the 30s. I ended up taking a bow shot last night, guys. It was dark. It's not the one you're thinking of, though. Not open that tree. I got down on that tree. I walked back in the cold. Finally got up here. It started raining. It was drizzling. I was ready to, to get warm and go to bed. So Stephanie had a delicious meal uh, she left out for me. She knew I was coming back, so I ate me a nice warm uh, meal. And then I was getting ready for bed and um, just kind of relaxing with Steph. And I was actually falling asleep. And she, uh, she wakes me up. She goes, hey, chickens. Anytime my wife says, hey, chickens, when it's like 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, I know that means... It ain't morning and they're crowing. So I run downstairs in my underoos. I'm half asleep. I come out here. I turn on the back porch light and I just see two, two eyes kind of bobbing back behind the little post over there. So I went and grabbed my flashlight. Luckily I had all my, my hunting stuff just there. I had my flashlight. So I grabbed the flashlight and start looking and I see, oh, it's a big bobcat. I'm like, okay, surely this bobcat is going to run off does not just stands there it's it's like size me up it's looking at me i'm like no no sir no 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 went in there i grabbed the bow i was like surely by the time i come out here knock an arrow this bobcat is going to be gone i keep in mind i already had my night sight set up everything my, my red light so everything was good to go this thing is bold bold enough where i'm i'm probably going to take a shot here because it's going to try to kill my chickens so as I start moving to get a shot around the fence over here, it runs off into the woods. And I figured it would probably stop, and it did. It ran like 15, 20 yards, and it stopped. And I was already drawn back, and I kind of took a guesstimate. And I shot, and I just hit his little whiskers. I mean, it was just uh, But then he took off into the woods, and I thought that was it. Colonel's a little upset because he walked outside this morning just like I did and he saw a dead bird on the ground. I'm going to stay focused on it for too long, but we lost a bird and that, uh, that bird was not outside of the fence this morning. So here's what, what actually happened. The birds, I called that bird Einstein because it kind of had like a puffy, uh, it, was a, it was a Polish so it had a puff on top of its head. Its hair looked like Einstein. But I could never get this bird to roost inside of the coop. I mean, it was just crazy. It would always roost on top. It would roost on something else. It never wants to go inside of the coop. It roosts with the other chickens. So I said, okay. You know, I kind of set up a roost over here on the outside, which works great most of the time. Now, when I came out the first time, one of my new chickens I call Peaches, 
she was on the ground and she had feathers missing and she got bopped by that bobcat. The bobcat stuck its hand in here and bopped that chicken. But I saved her. I, I got her, I put her, she was kind enough, gentle enough, where I put her back into the, uh, the big coop and she was fine. All right, I'm still trying to train some of the new chickens to sleep inside of there where they know it's safe. The Einstein, she, had, she has no brain anymore. Um, she's, uh, she, she wanted to sleep right here, as close to the fence as possible, and the bobcat just, it climbed up here, and it, uh, it reached its paws in there, grabbed it, and it wasn't able to take the whole body. It just, took, it just took her brain. The bobcat was deterred when I came out here, flung an arrow, and I went back in there, you know, I, I told Stephanie what happened. She was like, that, that bobcat's going to come back. And I was like, yeah, you're, you're probably right. You're probably right. And if it's going to get a chicken, it's going to be Einstein because she's roosting right next to the thing. And I can't grab her. She's got a really sharp beak. And she, she just comes at me. She comes at me. She freaks out. She's not very gentle. She's, she just, she's a freak out. Bobcat came back sometime in the middle of the night. Guys, in this video, we've just had... We've, we've attempted to do a saddle hunt here to get a pig, but we've, we've just had so many, so many critters, so many creatures, um, some dangerous. It's been like a Steve Irwin experience in this video. So hopefully you guys can appreciate it. Don't get, a, don't get an animal every time with a bow, but I'm here just filming it all, filming my interactions with the wildlife. Now, all of you following me on the Trad Bow Experience, rooting me on, thank you, and don't worry, I'm not giving up. In fact, I'm taking it next week on a deer hunt. Subscribe to stay tuned for more of that, and I'm wishing you good luck in your arrow flinging, jig slinging, hook setting experiences in the great outdoors. I'll see you back in it on the next one.